My name's Evan, but you can just call me Eddie. If you've never visited my page before, first go ahead and hit subscribe for me. Today we're going to be looking at a 2014 Nissan Sentra. I took this car in off a of trade, and guess what? It has a bad transmission. Common problem on these Sentras, and we're going to go over why. We're also going to go over everything that's good and bad about these cars. Wrong with this particular car here that I took in on a trade with a 04 Honda Pilot. You can check out that video on my channel. I rebuilt that transmission and I'll be talking about it in this video as well. Now, let's get right down to it. This 2014 Nissan Sentra has a transmission problem and we're going to check it out. All right, we get in it and it's actually really nice in here. Um, nice and clean. Owner took pretty good care of it. Looks like he liked McDonald's. But uh, he can do that in his pilot now. He has a lot of french fries in here. We're going to have to clean that out. But other than that, it's, it's not too bad. Now we do have a check engine light and a tire PMS light. But um, it, it's a uh, TPMS light. But it's, it's, it runs. We only got 97,000 on it. And it moves. So the transmission is not completely you know gone it still moves and drives and it does have a little bit of a racket see if you can hear that pretty sure that's coming from the alternator right there anyways uh check the fluid in it it does have a good enough amount of fluid in it so we're going to drive it and see how the transmission's acting All right, now hopefully we can get it to happen. Just driving it down the road real quick. We're close. To, oh, there it goes. Yeah, you can see that. It's it's slipping all over the place. This is a CVT transmission. It's essentially a go kart transmission. You can see that uh, that. Um, tachometer over there just the rpms are just going all over the place and that's that transmission just losing gear and slipping what's going on is it's a belt driven transmission it's uh it's on two metal pulleys and it's it's a metal belt and it's just slipping on those metal pulleys so that's that's what happens to these things and it happens quite often um i don't have the means to be able to repair them in-house so i have to buy a new transmission from Nissan Yay! so we're gonna get a brand new transmission it's already on the way it cost a pretty penny but we're gonna do it it comes with the 12 12 warranty look at this thing goodness gracious if you could feel it it is it is just all over the place and then once that converter cuts on it it feels a little better but still losing output to the wheels from the motor PO 420 that's a catalytic converter code. And we also have a couple different transmission codes. Who would have thought? So anyways, these are all just going to point to a new transmission. And we already know that. That PO420. Now, if you know me, you know I'm not the biggest fan of Nissan. Especially the Sentra. It's going to tell you a good example of why I'm not a big fan of Nissan. Let's start at the beginning. Back in 1982, Nissan introduced their first Sentra, and it had a 1.5 liter, 67 horsepower, four-cylinder motor, and it offered a four or five-speed manual transmission or a three-speed automatic transmission. It got a staggering 48 miles per gallon back then, which is mind-blowing. And Sentras quickly became the best-selling import of the 1980s. They were priced at about five to six thousand dollars back then. These became cheap, economical cars all the way through up the fifth generation, which came out in 1999. The fifth generation cars were pretty decent. They had nice little four-cylinder motors also. They ran good, and they had nice four-speed automatic transmissions paired with them. You could even get a sport package with a six-speed transmission in some models. Then in 2006, Nissan introduced the sixth-generation Sentra. 
This came along with a 2.0 or 2.5 liter motor with a choice of a six-speed manual or a dreaded CVT transmission. And that's what most of them got was the CVT transmission. Yes, it was in 2006 when Nissan introduced their Jatco CVT transmission and the whole design of this transmission is to save fuel by limiting the number of RPMs at the motor, which I think is just un-American. There's no gears in this transmission, only a metal belt with two metal pulleys that change sizes through hydraulic pressure, and when they change sizes, it changes the ratio of the transmission by expanding and contracting the belt. These pulleys get worn, the belt breaks, and the transmission design in general is just a dumpster fire. They pit these in everything. Altimas, Maximas, Pathfinders, Vans, SUVs, Infinities, it doesn't matter, the luxury it... You ask Nissan, they just tell you it's a lifetime fluid in the transmission and you don't need to change it. And basically they're just telling you wait until your transmission fails and instead of changing the fluid, we'll just change out the whole transmission. So just remember that next time you're driving your Nissan down the road, the only thing connecting your motor to the wheels is a metal belt that will definitely eventually break. The worst part about these transmissions is that the parts are so expensive to buy to rebuild them, it's not even worth really doing it. You might as well just buy a brand new one because you're going to have about the same amount of money in it when you're all said and done. So it really takes my hand out of this as far as being able to rebuild it. So you do have the right to repair it, you just don't have the ability to repair it because the design is so bad. Still a way for the car manufacturers to get out of having you fix their cars for a cheaper price when they can fix them and make more money off of them. It's all a gimmick if you ask me, and that's why I am not a huge fan of Nissan in general. If I was to buy a car and I was looking at an economical four-door sedan like a Sentra or in the same style of a Camry or a Cruze or a Civic, I would probably go with the Civic or the Camry because they might be more expensive, but they're definitely going to last longer and they're definitely going to give you less problems down the road. Let's do a quick comparison real quick. This car was traded in on my 04 Honda Pilot, which had 264,000 miles. We'll say 265 just to round up. This car has 97,000 miles. On the Honda Pilot, we had to take out the transmission and we were able to fix it in-house, one, and two, there wasn't really that much wrong with it. It had a burnt-up torque converter in it, and it was just losing gear when it really got hot. It was actually a pretty easy fix on that thing for somebody that knows what they're doing, and myself. Then we take a look at the Nissan, and I can't even repair the transmission. And on the Honda Pilot, we just had the transmission. We went into the steering rack and did inner and outer tire rods, and... Then it passed state inspection, and we had to put some wipers on it and fix a light, and it was ready to sell. Now we take a look at the Nissan Sentra. We can't even fix the transmission. We had to buy a brand new one from the factory. And on top of that, we had a number of other issues. An alternator, AC clutch, wheel bearings in the front and the rear going bad, ABS sensor in the rear, tensioner and belt, and all this with only 97,000 miles. The Pilot had half the issues with triple the mileage. And in my opinion, this is because Honda builds a better quality car. But everyone did in 2004, including the Nissan Sentra. Now, Honda has introduced a new CVT transmission themselves, and it's found in the Accords and the CRVs. Only time will tell to see how long they last, but my prediction is they will be slightly better than the Nissan CVTs. But not much better. So what do you do if you're a person looking for an economical car? Well, my advice is to either lease a new car or find a good mechanic like myself to look over any car you may be purchasing. My job is to make these cars as good as I can for as economical as I can and return them back to factory OEM quality so the next person that may be purchasing this car gets a car that is back to original quality as when it came off the factory. Now, of course, we can't get them that close, but I believe I've gotten it pretty close with this Nissan Sentra. We put a brand new transmission in it. We put remanufactured alternator in it. We put brand new wheel bearings in it. Everything we put in it was brand new and none of it was good used. And that's because it's a newer car, so it should have newer things in it. So we got this alternator off of dbelectrical.com. It's a company out of 
Kingsport, Tennessee. Watch that paper right there. And uh, they remanufacture alternators. So we're going to try them out, see how they work. Um, if they do work good, then, you know, maybe just be off. Uh, look, they even sent me a performance test report. Look at that. And this alternator was about 100 bucks cheaper online at DB Electrical than it was at a Riley's or any auto parts store that I went to look at or anywhere online, frankly. So that alternator was giving us a really loud noise on startup and you hear it now, sounds pretty normal. And we checked it for codes. It looks like all systems are good here on the code scan. So we're gonna just take this thing for a real quick ride, not far. Just see how everything's sounding and how everything's doing on it from the last time we gave it a ride with the cameras rolling. So, we uh, since then we've done a lot more things than we had to do to that 04 Honda Pilot that was traded in. This was traded in on. So, that badge right there, I'll tell you a little bit about that. Here, this thing's driving pretty good. We got a little bit of noise, but I think it's from those those high profile rims and a little bit of tire noise, but they're wheel bearing noise. Uh, it's not the smoothest ride because of those rims, those high profile tires. It's a nice smooth acceleration in this CVT transmission, brand new from Nissan and uh, it's programmed right. So no check engine lights, good mileage on the dash and it drives pretty smooth. Um, so I might change those tires out, get it to drive a little smoother. But other than that, I mean, no complaints. Not a bad little four-cylinder car to drive around. Uh, just make sure you keep that transmission fluid change. Well, what do I think of a Nissan Sentra? Well, they're a pain in the butt to fix up. But once you get them fixed up, they really don't drive all that bad. If you're planning on buying one or you own one, my recommendation would be to drive it moderately. And remember, you're driving a belt-driven transmission, and you need to service that thing every 30,000 miles in order to keep that thing going on the road. Thank you for watching, folks. I hope this helps you out in your decision to buy a Nissan Sentra, or if you own one, I hope this helps you maintain it so you don't end up like this one did. Please like and subscribe for more videos, and as always, stay dirty, friends.